Good evening and welcome to The Vault. I'm Christy Dehaven. Today we take a historical tour around the island's landmarks, landscape and heritage with some much-loved voices from The Vault. Coming up, an adventure with Mike Goldie prompts David Collister to reflect that... I've been in some places with Goldie and now this is the worst thing I've been involved with. John Quilliam tackles the big questions... Which is the nicest beauty spot in this island of man? And later says this... Of course, she exclaimed, the cows help too. I don't think the two are necessarily related. And where, oh where, could Fenella Basin be? The mile that separates the two spans the whole of man's achievements. First, though, Howard Hampton takes us on an audio walk. The next few minutes are full of fun, fascinating facts and beautiful lyrical descriptions of a favourite ramble. Recorded in 1978, there are, of course, many references to things no longer visible or standing. And a famous mongoose, who may or may not have been able to talk. Good morning, all. And by dang, we've had a bit of weather lately, haven't we? Anyway, not walking weather, but... Here we are this morning with the finger on the map at Glen May. And we ought to be seeing some signs of life returning to the trees now. We can see the day is stretching a little bit at night anyway, can't we? Well, we're going to go down the hill on the main road towards Niabal. And we're going to cross this little stream at the bottom and follow the lane on the left. Now, this will probably be a bit dampish, but why worry? It's worth coming here again in the spring when the trees and hedges, they're full of life, the birds are nesting, there's field mice running around, rabbits, ah, even long-tailed fellas. You'll get them all up here because it's really lovely and peaceful. Now, keeping to the lane, we'll cross another little stream. I remember having me lunch here one day. Oh, it was beautiful. Tranquility itself. And now, after this stream, we're going to rise up some rocky slabs They're not difficult to climb, but be careful as they may be slippery with being wet. And if you slip well, you'll finish up with a wet bottom. Well, we're breaking out into a wider track and we'll arrive at Doolish Cashin. Now, this is a ruined farm which made the headlines some years ago by supposed to have a mongoose running around which could talk like a human. It was known insularly as the talking mongoose or the Derby spook. And, you know, reporters came over from the national press to try and get get it to talk. Ah, well. And they say that we Manx are just simple island folk. Enough said. Leaving Doolish Cashing, we'll keep to this track out to the Derby Road where we'll turn left and we'll pass Glen Russian Plantation and go up to the Round Table Crossroads, go straight across onto the Colby Glen Road, but only for about oh, a quarter of a mile, and then we'll take this rough road on the left and we'll walk down until this rough road meets the Carlier Road. Oh, there's a wonderful view going down this road. The whole south of the island lie in front of you. Oh, it's beautiful. And you s- the view sweeps round from Santon Head, over Ronald's Way Airport, Castletown, Bainer, Carrickey, and Port St. Mary, and the Mull Hills at the back. Oh, it's marvellous. Well, we're going to turn left onto the Carlier Road and walk along to Solomon's Corner, where we'll turn left again We're on the main Foxdale Road now, but we're not going to go very far because almost opposite us at Solomon's Corner, on the east side of the road, there's a little footpath, and we're going to follow this until it meets a small road, and we'll take this road southwards past the Cardamon to St. Mark's Church. Now, this isn't a parish church. Lots of people think it's a parish church, but it's not. Uh, But it certainly acts as a good landmark for we walkers. Well, we're going to leave St. Mark's Church and head towards Balasala, but again, not very far, only about half a mile, and we'll turn left onto the Reish Road, and we'll walk along, down the hill to Mullinarraga, and cross over the Santon River, up the hill the other side, and we'll join the Clannock Road, where we'll turn right, and out onto the main douglas to port Road, where we'll turn left and head for home. Home being Douglas in my case. And we're going to pass what was some years ago a most popular place, Mount Murray, which latterly has continued as Alex Inn, and bless me soul, for the past few years it's just been a derelict blot on the landscape. Anyway, by the time we arrive at Douglas, our walk has covered about, oh, 15 miles. So long, yes, sir. So long. Thanks to Howard Hampton for that audio ramble. Now to an episode of Heritage Tours.
In this clip from 1988, Fenella Basin is looking at the highest point of the island. If you've ever climbed to the summit of Snowfell, you'll know that it's actually a lot higher than it looks. Most people tackle it from the bungalow, but hardier souls follow the Laxey River from the coast, walking the path of history, retracing a well-worn centuries-old route. Skirting the island's only mountain on its western side is the track, now marked as the Millennium Way, but going by its older name of the Burree, the King's Road, which links Sky Hill to the south. Its importance in Manx history is legendary, a route of warfarers as well as peaceful traders and visitors. At the point where it crosses the modern road above Thalter Will is marked a cross dyke, a mysterious prehistoric earthwork built for, well, who knows what, an elaborate boundary marker, declaration of territory, a defensive work. Well, whatever it is, it's worth stopping to have a look at anyway. Moving northwards is the boggy valley to the north of the mountain, where there are marked shielings, the traditional summer pastures found all over the island. Again, our ancestors were great earth movers, reshaping the landscape without the benefit of machinery. Skirting Snaefell now, looking eastwards along the dramatic outline of the long ridge of North Brule, the smooth surface of the modern road, the TT course, snakes its way along the pass between Snaefell and Brule, a route for modern commuters, clinging to the mountainside at the veranda, exactly following the contours for over two miles. Just before the bungalow is the memorial erected to Les Graham, a much-loved competitor in the TTs. It takes the form of a shelter, double-roofed against the snow. Because it's the highest point in the Isle of Man, it's the place where the snow lingers, often a long time after it's disappeared from nearby hills. Its very name means Snow Mountain, a Scandinavian name may be given by Icelanders homesick for their own snow fell in its glacier, perhaps the same people who occupied the 12th century shillings on the north slope of the mountain. The Manx name, Mullach Snjall, is hardly ever used. Sheep graze the hillside now, but at one time there would have been numbers of white goats, and maybe deer and wild pigs known as purrs. If you're lucky, you'll see a mountain hare, brown in summer, but better still in its winter camouflage of white. The area known as the bungalow sees the crossing of the railway and the mountain road. It's now the site of a motorcycle museum, and don't expect to see nothing but historic motorbikes there. But when the island was in the throes of the visiting industry, there was, to quote a Ward Lock Guide of 1919, a comfortable, fully licensed restaurant. These visitors must have enjoyed their food and drink because there was another fully licensed restaurant at the summit, a rather splendid castellated hotel, looking rather like a small castle with Georgian windows. Linking the two hotels with Laxey is the electric railway. Five miles of track with a gradient of one in twelve and a gauge of three foot six, wider than that of the other Manx railways, and incidentally it's the longest mountain railway in the British Isles. Although the mountain had been surveyed in the late 1880s, it wasn't until the 1890s that work began. But once they started, they certainly didn't dawdle. Ten miles of overhead line went up in just eight days. The railway was completed in seven months, including the generating plant. And when the inspection day came, an electrical fire in the switchboard room was cleaned up, repaired and repainted in just four hours. There were six cars, ash-framed and teak-panelled, and apart from some additional glazing and weatherproofing, they're still very much as they were 90 years ago. The present Summit Hotel is very recent, replacing one destroyed by fire not long ago. Because of mist on the summit, the fire ranged for some time without being spotted. Even if it had been, it's not the sort of place to take a fire engine anyway. It's not a hospitable place to stay, although it is a hive of activity, a centre of communications all taking advantage of the height, with the two radio masts visible for miles around. The red lights on the mast tops warn passing aircraft to keep their distance. But Snaefell has been the graveyard of unfortunate aircraft, particularly when JBRAF station was operative. If you're listening to this programme in the north of the island, you can be pretty sure that your radio is picking up its signal from Snaefell. I'll come back to that another day, as it's another story in itself. But in any case, it's a far cry from the ancient earthwork a few hundred feet below. The mile that separates the two spans the whole of man's achievements, from moving huge quantities of soil to build a long, high hedge, to sending messages across the air to fast-moving, high-flying aircraft carrying hundreds of passengers across the Atlantic. Fenella Basin there with wonderful commentary from the highest points of the island, recorded in 1988. You're listening to an episode of The Vault, a selection of programmes and features from the 70s and 80s reflecting the heritage, landmarks and landscape of the Isle of Man. Now, a very popular series, Know Your Parish, 
presented by John Quilliam. Here he's looking at the west of the island. Good afternoon to you all once again. This is John Quilliam with Know Your Parish. From Ballacrane Corner in the parish of Kirk German and travelling on the TT course to follow the river Neb, passing Laurel Bank, through a large hollow known as Glen Moor, here, situated right on the bank of the river, is a well-maintained water mill. This was uh, an extremely busy mill in years gone by, for the surrounding land is very hilly. Indeed, the uh, land on all sides rise so rapidly with farms and crofts perched on the slopes or even away on the tops, not having any catchment of water to drive a wheel. They came down with their grain to this mill, which was blessed with an ample supply of water even in the driest of summers. To cart the processed grain back from the mill up these rough, steep, steep country hillside tracks was hard going for a horse-drawn cart. To such places as the Starvey, the Vaish, Lamb Fell, the Beery, and others. One of these farmers remarked that two sacks of corn was enough for any horse to drag up yonder. Or, if you had a bigger load, you'd have to use a chain horse. A farm labourer from that area once said that uh, the leather sole on his shoes were permanently bent, or bent up, by the constant climb up these hills. A local preacher from Fleshik in Russian told me many years ago that he was appointed to take anniversary services out here and was invited to tea at one of those crofts on the heights. I'll do without me tea, he said, rather than climb up there. And I'm not taking the pony and trap, for the thing has had enough to do coming from Russian and going back. Leaving the old mill and after some distance to arrive at one of the island's grandest glens, anciently called Renas, Waterfall Division, now called Glen Helen. This latter name was one given to it by a Mr. Marsden of Liskerd Castle near Liverpool, who came to reside here in 1850. His daughter's name was Helen. The Glen was then called Helen's Glen, or Glen Helen. The Glen is approximately one mile long on both banks and embodies 65 and a half acres. At the top of the Glen is a picturesque Renas Falls. Here, the Blaber River, which comes from behind the Beery Mountain, joins the Neb. Blaber means blaberry, that sweet blue mountain fruit so tasty when used in that customary Manx tart, and I've had it many times. While Mr. Marsden was in residence here, he had planted about one million trees and shrubs, many of them rare specimens, which now reach a tremendous height. The differing shades of green along the entire stretch is a charm to behold. He also built a private dwelling and an hotel, which was originally called Swiss Cottage. A fir tree growing on the shaded lawn was planted by that famous woman aviator, Amy Johnson, in 1933. The whole glen became the property of the Manx Trust on July the 12th, 1958. John Quilliam there, with a clip from Know Your Parish, recorded in 1976. Next up, a very popular programme from the vault, Go With Goldie. This is from 1988, the very final edition of the programme, in fact, as Mike Goldie takes his series partner David Collister on a real adventure.
We're sort of halfway between Belig Bridge, which is just down the road from us, and uh, Laurel Bank. And I was born just up the road from here, so this, this particular place here, I don't think many people know about. As you call it, it's a hole in the wall. Hole in the wall? Hole in the wall. Yes, a hole yes. in the wall. Actually, it's, it's a tunnel. I think it must be about 100 yards long, and it leads into a quarry. It's rather interesting. I mean, there's nothing sort of supernatural or anything about it. We're not know. going in there, are we? Oh, yes, we are. You've got your green wellies on, oh. and I have got my green wellies on. Oh, we have permission. We've got to go. Much, yes. After right, you. Okay. Right, well, I'll follow you through the swamplands here. Bit of gorse at the entrance. It's not too and bad. I thought it you can't see work. anything in here. Oh, yeah, you, you There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Goodness You're down great. on your hands and knees. See oh, it? I see it now, yes. Right. We might be took in here. Oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, good acoustics, though, David. Well, yes, good. we could probably go, well go fishing as well in this lot. There's not many people going to walk through here, I'll tell you. Uh, it's rather strange that it is so long, isn't it, really? It's very, yeah. very eerie, yes. It's hardly uh, enough height for a whole thing to come, really. No. When it gets lower, as we get to the end... Does it? Does it? Am I going to bang my head here? Uh, not just yet. When I bang my head, it's not you to worry. When I hear the scream, mm -hmm. this will be it. I think we've got to be in a crouched position. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm crouching um, as far as my old body will let me in. We're getting low and low again. Down the now. Ah. Well, now, this is the worst thing I've been involved with. I've been in some places with Goldie. I cannot believe that I've come up through this amazing place. Well, we used to have small carts in those days. Ah. Uh, Oh. I don't think it was worth it, really. <laughs> what do you mean you don't think it was worth it? What? You weren't seeing what we I are. was seeing, seeing you coming over a little hole about uh, two foot high here. Yeah. So this, oh. this, this obviously was, uh, this tunnel was the entrance to the quarry. Yeah, yes, you'd wonder and how and they, they got it out. a lot of stone being taken out of here when you look round, you know, it's all round about. Yes, and it's, it, uh, And it, it obviously was a quarry a because there's drill That's right. things there. It hasn't been a huge quarry, but there's certainly yeah. some height here yeah. if they were well, working. As I say, out. it does seem funny that it, it's not awfully high, unless it's got stones have built up over the years. Probably, on the floor. yeah, yeah. But it, it would be nice if it hadn't been born round this area. I've never heard anything about this particular tunnel, you know. And I think it'd be rather nice if some listeners are, are listening, you know, and uh, they can tell us something about it. It would be rather nice. I wonder how long ago, so it was a quarry uh, like this, or, uh, oh, it was a, quarry a disused like quarry when you knew it? Yeah, so. 50 years ago. 50 years I ago. I remember my f uh, father used to point it out to me, and it was in the wartime, and they had, somebody had painted ARP on the stone wall just outside the area. Air raid protection. That is it, yes. Yes, yes. Right, not a lot to see, as you say here, but there is rather a strange echo, they tell me, halfway down the tunnel. Oh, yeah? So we'll, shall we go back in again and try and get this strange oh, echo? I thought we were going out a different way. We've got to go oh back no, to we've got to go we? back, sorry. Dear, dear, dear. Notice, there is a peculiar echo, so if you've got everything ready. This is certainly very weird. Would you, would you care to try it now? Give us a shout. Hello! 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 That's not your <laughs> echo, David. Ah, that is not my I echo. I would ask, who is it? I see a crouching figure at the end of the tunnel here. Who is now. it? Hello! Hello! You go on. Hello, David! It is I, and the mad Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? It's been a long time. Now I'm going down. Right to the bottom end. I asked you to come down and have tea with me some time ago, but you didn't turn up. Didn't I turn up? You did not. Who is this? Who is this? Let's in front of us? I cannot see. I can see I this can figure see in the dark here. This is Arthur from Castletown. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Arthur? Please Very to well you. indeed, please thank you. you. And I'm pleased oh, to what meet an you. amazing thing. Well, I will leave you now, David. I, I've enjoyed <laughs> this series very much. I'll leave you with Arthur and his dark trouble here. It's been a smashing summer, so I'll see you soon. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Now, Arthur. I believe you've been in uh, Tenerife. Tenerife, sir. Well, if you'd have stayed in the Isle of Man, 
you had a, would have had a wonderful summer. Now look here, when I got back here, the newspaper report said it's been the worst summer for three years running that they've had in living memory. Now you were wrong about the weather. I, I, I have to admit that, <laughs> David, but I was right in some things because on the mainland in the Middle East, the Far East, they had torrential rain and they lost thousands of lives through the flooding. He'll have us in a book as two people living in this Thalton, you know. <laughs> yes, well, there's just one thing, David, there's no ladies. <laughs> Brilliant stuff from Mike Goldie, David Collister and Arthur Vanwell. Finally, in this episode of The Vault, the last word must go to John Quilliam, tackling one of those age-old questions. Sometimes one is asked the question of which is the nicest beauty spot in this island of man? A most difficult question to answer. For what grander view can one get from the top of Snaefell Mountain on a clear day? Or what better scenery could one find than looking down from the Mull Hills and Craigneish onto the rocky coast by the Sound and the Calf? Or a walk to the lonely slopes of Eri Cushland to Lagnakilia. A stroll amongst the short golden flowering gorse and purple heather around the point of air. A journey between the hills of Solby Glen and Faulty Will. The waterfalls of Spook Vane, Ballaglass and the Doon. A trip through the Baldwin Valleys and Ingebrecht over the moors from Brandywell by Druidale to Ravensdale and Balaf. A leisurely gaze from the round table or slock, the sandy beach of the Len, or Port Ern from Brad ahead. To those with a different attitude to beauty, there are the ancient castles and monuments, old water mills, lead mines, coastal caves, chasms, corrects. In fact, the contents of a book could not list all that, is, that this island has in the way of beauty. For, in my opinion, the real and true beauty spots lie in the out-of-the-way, partly hidden recesses, often by a tiny stream or hillside crag. And to touch or smell the glories of nature's floral art, to trace an overgrown footpath that once led to somewhere, to sit quietly on a sod hedge and watch the wonder, the wild, colourful, feathered friends with their chords of music, all come within the category of beauty. Then there is the human contribution to these pleasures to meet an old crofter or farmer whose ancient skills and crafts should never be forgotten. How absorbing it is, and it was, to meet such a one at the Starvey and discuss for an hour the making of straw thumb ropes, sogains and blankets. Yet another from the slopes of Arbury and how he used the swing plough and the wheelless, horse-drawn ridger. You had to watch your eye when you handled one of those things, he said. A charming lady from the tops who described in detail, while enjoying a cup of tea, how she used to make the perfect Manx butter. Of course, she exclaimed, the cows helped too. What a wonderful place to leave it. Thanks to John Quilliam for his reflections there from 1976. You've been listening to The Vault, a special programme from the Manx Radio Archive. Hearing a selection of voices taking us on a historical tour around the island's landmarks, landscape and heritage. If you missed any of this programme, you can listen back again via the Manx Radio podcast page or using your usual provider. We'll have more from The Vault next week. Thanks for listening.